Now we're going to do a actual piece of logic with function block diagrams. And I'm trying to keep the application similar between all the languages so you have a fair comparison between the languages. In other words, if you had a piece of logic in ladder logic diagram and you want to do the exact same thing in function block diagram in structured text and sequential function charts, how would you do that? Now, we're, gonna, we're not going to do that exactly, but we'll try to come as close as we can as we do this. So, let's look at our function block diagram project. Welcome to the lab discussion for function block diagrams. This is a lab project in Volume 2 of RS5000, part of the language section, ladder logic diagrams, function block diagrams, structured text, and sequential function charts. Of the four languages, of course, ladder logic diagrams are the most popular and the most versatile when you consider not just engineering but also maintenance and process improvement. Function block diagrams are probably the second most popular, especially in the process industry. We've already done quite a bit of ladder logic diagram. Now we're going to do function block diagram. As you see, we already have RS Logix 5000 open, but we have not yet created a project. So in the manual, we had you create a new project. So go up to File, New. And I'm going to pick an L35e processor because that's what I'm connected to. So we pick an L35e processor. You could pick something different if you have something different. And we're going to use revision 20 because that's the most popular currently. Version 21 is available, but it does not support the L35e. As a matter of fact, I don't presently own any processors that are supported by version 21. That would be the new Compact Logix L1, L2, L3, the 5370 family, and the L70X series of control logic. So we'll pick version 20, and I had you name it function block diagrams. And we will do that just so ours looks just like yours. function block diagram. The last thing that we're going to do as we create this new controller, create this new project, is we're going to point to the folder where we want to store our files. You see it comes up by default RS Logix 5000 projects. That's the default location. I'm going to browse to a different location and it's going to be on my desktop under PLC Professor under Learn 5000. So uh, I'm going to save my projects in the Learn 5000 folder, not the archive for recording. This is all my folder structure. You've got your own. But I typically save it in Learn RS 5000 because the, they aren't real projects they're part of the learning process. So I'll click on Learn 5, RS5000, OK. And so I've got this all filled in now. This should be old hat for most of you. If you've done all the previous labs, then you should be quite accomplished at creating new projects, because we've created many in the process. So here's our new project. I'll narrow that up a little bit, probably more later to get more uh, viewing space in here for our code. We have a project now and all that we've actually done was create a controller. In addition to the controller we need I.O. modules. If we look at our project view over here, our project explorer, and we look under I.O. configuration you see that we have a backplane, we have a processor, and we have an Ethernet port. And then it also shows the local bus. This particular processor only has one bus, and that's the Compact bus, which uses the 1769 I.O. modules. We need to add the modules that were shown in the lab. The first module is an OB16P, so we right-click on Compact bus, new module, 
and then to save us time we go up to our search field and we type in now remember that RS Logics 5000 knows that we have an L35e so it knows that we aren't going to pick from I.O. modules that are not compatible with this hardware venue. You look at the list right there, all you see is 1769. Very intuitive. So we'll just type in OB, lowercase, and you see that eliminates all but the OB modules. And right there's the OB16P. If we went a little further and typed in a 1, now you see we have just the 16s. Uh, there's no need to type in the whole thing. Just start typing in until you see what you want. And then you can double click on it or you can single click. Click on create. And I see now that the it was not completely in the view on the screen. So I'm going to do that again. won't hurt you to see it more than once. OB. I'll pull this up a little bit. We could double click on OB16P or click on it and then click create and now it brings up the configuration pop-up. We're going to call this as we did in the project DC underscore out zero one. DC underscore out zero one. I do this for several reasons. DC that way you know it's a DC output module and then of course out you know it's an output module and then zero one because it's in slot one you don't really have to do that you could call this module anything that you want so we named it and we could go in and change the revision level which you would have to go to RS links look to see what rev level that module is and then correct it here instead I'm just going to leave a compatible module or you could even disable the key which quite often I do that way I don't have to worry about any discrepancies in the rev level. We'll just leave a compatible module, click OK, click OK, and now we've added this I.O. module to our virtual PLC, our programmable automation controller. But this is a virtual PAC, not a real PAC. The real PAC is actually a piece of hardware that has memory. What we're doing is creating a memory image a data image of that controller with some I.O. modules. I'll uh, stretch that out a little bit and I'm going to add another module. The second module was an IQ16F so we'll just type in I that did not eliminate enough. Q there's our 16F right there. I'm going to double click this time instead of clicking OK you know create and then OK and this is going to be DC underscore N Zero 02 because it's in slot 2 and we need to add one more new module and we have an IF4X so IF there's the IF4X right there but I'm going to type in one more number see how quickly it clarifies IF4X when I put in the X that eliminates everybody else double click this one is going to be instead of DC analog in out zero three okay now we have our three IO cards now we may not use all three of these cards in our lab but because the hardware is there I may decide to add more lab that uses the analog card right now we're just using the two discrete IO cards because we're keeping our function block diagram very simple now we want to open the main routine. So we go back up to the main program, expand it, double click on main routine, and now we're ready to enter some logic. In the lab, I had you enter two rungs of logic. I'm not going to continue recording while I'm entering that logic because you have entered, written plenty of ladder logic code at this point, so there's no reason for you to watch me doing it. So I'm going to pause and then come back with it entered. I'm back and I you see that I have entered some logic. However, I've not completed it. One way you can tell is the E's, the edit zones over here are marked with E's. Anytime you see E's over here with RS5000, RS Logix 5000, you know that something in this rung and in this rung is not complete. Of course, it's not complete because I have not defined any of the tags. 
your first clues that you would see because this may not look any different once I've defined it but you see when you mouse over undefined tag undefined undefined etc another couple clues notice the lowercase tt for timer timing because that's the way I typed it in if the latch to delay timer had already been been configured defined as a timer when I typed in dot or decimal point lowercase tt when I hit enter they would change to uppercase because you can enter the tag without it being case sensitive if the tag art exists when you're done entering it it will pop up in the way that you originally created it plus you see the question marks here for preset and accumulate so I'm going to define a couple of these tags and then I'm going to pause and finish them and not make you watch me doing the whole thing so I'm going to right click start PB is a new tag and I want it to be an alias for an input. Now our inputs were slot 2, you see configuration and input. So we expand slot 2 input data, drop down the list and we'll grab bit 0. Now you see our tag is defined. Define an output. This is an output new alias and the outputs were slot 1 and so we want slot 1 O for output expand data that brings up this drop down list drop it down and pick 0 now we've defined an input and an output tag this is also going to be an input but this is going to be a timer so first we'll because this tag is part of the timer data structure for latch delay we're going to right click new latch delay and notice that data type is timer it knows it's a timer instruction so the software is intuitive enough that it knows that you want to define latch delay as a timer data type so we can just first make sure that it's where you want it to be the main program always recognizable by the symbol for the processor those are controller tags these are program tags we're going to leave it in main program I just want to remind you that we picked main program. If later on I want to define a tag as a controller tag, I have to go select it. It doesn't automatically read my mind. And then it leaves it as controller tags. Then if you continue working and you think they're going into your program tags, you would be wrong. They're still still going into the last place you pointed to the last time you used this pop-up. So we're just going to hit create. Let's finish these up. I have the I.O. completely configured, all the tags configured, and I see now that the lowercase tt did not update to the uppercase. However, I'm annoyed by that lowercase tt, so I'm going to double click here, and I'm going to go pick that tag to get the uppercase tt. Now, you don't have to do that. Normally, what I would do is I would create this tag first then I would drag this up to here now you see the tags not complete then I would double click expand that timer data type and then pick the tag and end up with the uppercase TT likewise with the latch delay uppercase DN sorry for that little aside now you know that if you type in dot lowercase tt before the tag is actually created it'll stay that way unless you update it by reselecting it to an uppercase tt you could have created this logic and define these tags online or offline it really doesn't matter one thing i will remind you of though if you do this online and you make a mistake once you've defined the tag you cannot change anything other than you can edit the tag name but there's not much else you can do so if you mess up a tag when you create it online you would have to first remove it from any logic then delete it from the tag database then recreate it the way you want it it's normally easier to do all of this offline and then download now in our case however you did this at this point we want to go offline you see that I am already offline we're going to go offline because we're going to new routine 
So the next step was we right clicked on main program, new routine, and this new routine we named FBD underscore zero one. Function block diagrams underscore zero one. You could name it anything you want. Um, I picked this just in case I wanted to do an FBD zero two, another routine of function block diagrams. Now this alone won't do the job. If you accidentally hit OK, then you end up with a ladder diagram routine named function block diagram zero one. The routine does not care what you named it, and there's no nothing other than an implication if you call a function block diagram, and then it's ladder diagram. It implies that it's FBD, but the program doesn't know that. So make sure that you pick the language that you want. We want function block diagrams, and of course we want it in the main program. So we click OK. Now we want to open that function block diagram routine. So we double click. Now it's open. I'm going to get rid or move around some of the menu components to give me a little bit more space here. This one, I'm going to pull it out. As a matter of fact, I will just turn it off. That gives me a little more vertical space. Now let's add some code. If you look up here, you'll see under favorites, input reference, output reference, input wire connector, output wire connector. We're going to start with a input reference. Bring the input reference down into the worksheet. We'll click on it so it's selected and we'll start typing in a tag. As soon as I hit start, it pops up with LED. That's because L comes before P. We have two tags, remember, that we created in the program tag, start LED and start PB for push button. We could either keep typing or once we have ST up there and we have a kind of a type forward, drop down the list and there's the tag you want right there. Click on that and you've got your tag in there. And let's relocate that a little further down because we want to bring in another input reference. Place it right near it and on this one we're going to type in display DI and with DI was enough to bring up the entire tag so we can just hit enter and now we've got our two input references that we need to start our function block diagram. I'm going to move this over one notch and move this one over a couple notches. Next we want to drag and drop a binary AND or Boolean AND, binary Boolean. Drag that down into view here and we want it to line up with display enable switch so we'll drop it right there. I see it jumped when I dropped. Okay we want it to line these up so when we connect them up we get straight lines. With function block diagrams it automatically gives you a name for the, the block. In this case it's BAND underscore zero one. If we were to bring down another one, see it would be BAND zero two. We'll delete that. We don't want that in there. Next we want to connect display enable switch into input one of the Boolean AND and we also want to connect the start push button into input 2. Now before we get too far ahead of ourselves and that gives you a little start there and in the lab I did have you do it in this order so I'm going to follow the exact order that I did in the lab. I'm going to go over here and create another routine. We're going to call it LLD zero un or underscore zero one but we don't want a function block diagram. So remember, a lot of these types, they stay with whatever you last selected. They don't go back to a default. So you always have to be careful to pick what you want. So now you see we have three routines. We have the main routine recognized by the little uh, dog-eared sheet of paper with a one on it. We have a function block. It's ladder and it's the main routine. Here we have the little symbol, dog-eared piece of paper with function blocks on it. 
then here we have another one with ladder on it. What differentiates this one from this one is a little sheet of paper that says one for main routine. Let's go into the main routine and select our logic. So I click on rung zero, I hold down the shift key or the control key in this case and click on one. Now I have them both selected. Control C to copy them. I go to ladder logic diagram zero one click there and control V to paste them into there. I don't want this unfinished rung so I click on that and hit delete. So now I've copied the logic from the main routine into LLD01. I go back to the main routine and I delete these so it's empty. In order to make this work, and this is not really the intent of this lab for you to learn this because you should already know this procedure. I'm back in the main routine and I need to create two rungs that JSR jump subroutine to FBD01 and LLD01. I'm going to go in here, create two rungs. I could select the true if on and then dig around and find the JSR, but instead I'm going to double click and bring up the text enter and I'm going to type in XIC space JSR enter and I'll do the same thing here that's just a faster way of entering in the code rather than going up to your element toolbar here finding the right tab and then finding the instruction in the lab I had you put a tag here enable LLD and enable FBD but these aren't tags yet see they're undefined so we quickly define them we want them in the main program their base and their boolean create new create we still have the ease over here in the edit zones because we haven't pointed to a routine this is an able LED LLDs drop down the list and pick that one see the E's are gone now do the same thing here only this time function block diagrams because see now everybody's happy so now we go back to uh, function block diagrams so you see we have the ladder logic and then we have the function block diagram all executed by JSRs from the main routine at this point I had you save it download and go online so save once it's saved, communications, who active, pull this into your view. We're going to use the DF1 driver because that is the most common one used in the beginning. This processor, of course, has Ethernet, so we could be using Ethernet. We'll just stick with the DF1. Now, when we click on this processor, it shows us the back plane. And we'll, we'll keep drilling down here. So we go through the back plane and you see the compact logics processor again the problem is that's not the processor see how this is grayed out over here that is a placeholder to show you that on the back plane in slot 0 you have the processor slot 1 is the Ethernet adapter and then slot 3 is the local bus adapter now these aren't module slots these are addresses of hardware ports on the controller. This is the processor up here. You see when I select it now these buttons are active. So we're going to say download waiting waiting waiting. With RS-232 that's what you do. You wait. Very slow. Ethernet much faster. This is a standard message that you're going to see every single t time you download. Read it once but don't bother reading it every single time unless you forgot what it said download and now you see the progress bar and you can read the descriptions of what it, what all it's doing it downloaded the routines now it's linking the routines into the process change the controller back to the remote run mode yes now you know we're in the run mode because of the green and if you look at our logic here we have the dis play enable switch and we have the start push button switch and they're going into this boolean and gate we'll call it 
I will point out something that if you don't connect these two, they are automatically set to one. That way you have a two input AND gate, not a four input. If you were to connect one of these to something, then it would then be active. Right now these are basically set to one. That way if both of these are one, then you have an output. So let's turn on one of these. Display enable switch. See now that this is one, but this is still zero because this is zero. We turn on the other switch. Now you see they're both one and this is still zero. So you're probably wondering, well, PLC professor, that didn't work. Well, actually it did, but there was one thing that we neglected to do. Now in the lab I told you to do it, but um, I forgot to do it, and this is a good lesson, that when you see that this should be true, but there's no output, then you know that this routine is not executing. So we go back to the main routine, and you see that this is not toggled on. Now this is an internal bit, so I right click on it, toggle bit. See now it's true. Now if I go back to the function block diagram, now you see this is one. So if I turn those switches, one of those switches off, you see the output goes to zero. Now let's save this, go offline, and add some more. I don't particularly like the way the wire elements come in sometimes, so if you move the input references around, you can get the shape to change. Of course I don't like that. I don't like that. That's not bad, but we always want to conserve space. I don't like that, even though it's a straight line because they're right on top of each other. I like a little space. It's not going to make any difference at all in how this thing executes in the routine. It's all a matter of how you want it to look to you. So you can move this around. You might save this and the next time it pops up that line might have a different shape but it still functions the same. If you definitely don't want it coming straight off at, at a perpendicular angle then over then just move it back a little bit behind this one and it has to jog. Okay the next thing we were going to add was an output reference. So we go up here, we grab an output reference, and we bring it down. We can put it anywhere and then move it later. So we'll put it right there. And then we have you tag it. Click on it and then type in start, ST, and of course immediately get start LED. You can just hit enter, and there you have it. And then we want to connect it with a line, a wire, that simple. And again, you can move it around anywhere you want. Of course we don't like the looks of that line. Put it down here. That doesn't look too bad, but still we like it over here somewhere. So for right now we'll just leave it. If we put it up here, that's see how it comes off perpendicular? I don't like the way that looks. That's better. We'll just leave it right at the straight out. Okay, now we want to download. So we'll save first. Save. Then communications, who active? and since this is already selected and we could set the project path that way for this project it always comes up and it's looking for this exact exact path and processor but we'll just leave it that way and say download we're going to go through the same process we did before here's that message again that i told you read it once so you kind of know what it says there are no warnings here specific to something that you may or may not have done correctly. This is just a standard message that comes up with a couple warnings. The controller is in the remote run mode. The mode will be changed to remote program prior to download, which means when you click on download, it's going to change the mode of the controller from remote run to remote program. If you don't want it to do that, then you don't click on download. Instead, you put the controller in remote program from the key switch on the front of it, or if it's actually running a process in manufacturing or in production right now, you can't download. You'll have to wait until an opportune time 
to change the mode, which means the process will stop running, then you can put it in a remote program and download. So we're going to go ahead and download though because this is just a piece of hardware with lights and switches on it. So we click download and of course with RS-232 the process is very slow. I will go back after I've recorded and delete some of the weights out of this video. So if you're listening to this video and you didn't see a bunch of long waits then that means I edited them out but know that with RS-232 this could even be 9600 baud rate we should go look and at least bump it up to 19.2 anytime you do anything with your program you're going to get this error routine that's going to run and give you errors and warnings now warnings are not a big deal however what it's doing is if I click here and I scroll up, there's my two warnings. Basically what it's saying is that in my main program, in my routine, LLD01, rung 0, I have an OTE, energized output, and is it is referencing the same tag that would be bit 0 of our input card. Oh, I'm sorry, bit 0 of our output card. Also in function block diagram, sheet 1, we have an output reference to the exact same tag. In ordinary programming you wouldn't do that, but remember we're going to enable and disable those routines one at a time. So I'm going to close this because I don't care about the warnings. Now you see that both of these inputs are on and if I look over at my hardware trainer I see that that LED is on. If I flip either one of those switches off it immediately goes off back on. So what you see here really is no different than what you saw the last time you went online in the run mode except now we're actually controlling an output. We have two physical field devices, two switches. These are, both happen to be toggle switches. This one, the way I have my demo wired up, I can turn off the toggle switch. See it goes to zero then I can use the push button instead of the toggle switch. Those of you that have watched the videos on building your hardware demo or your hardware trainer know that other than the Micrologix 1000 10 point brick in the original video where I showed you how to build a trainer I had six toggles as inputs. On the later ones I put a push button wired in parallel with each toggle switch. That way I can leave the toggle switch off and just push the button to turn it on. I have a momentary contact instead of a maintained or I can use the toggle switch as a maintain. In this case I have a push button. If I push it goes on and the output goes on. Once more testing our program. Turn on the the display enable switch. You see that it goes to one right here. Now we'll try the start push button and you notice the output goes on. One thing we want to do before we go offline and make changes I want to show you editing your tags online. It would be just as the same that you did with ladder logic. You would right click on the tag name, edit properties, and then make your changes. In this case I want an underscore in between start and LED. You can't see it on the screen but down below here is OK. Then we do the same thing for start push button. Add the underscore, press enter, the changes are made online. We could do the same thing with, with display enable switch. I just want to demonstrate that you can edit the tags in function block diagram the same as you do in ladder logic. Let's save. It's not always necessary to upload your data files. The data files in this case would be the state of those bits which we really don't care if we save them or not. Now in the real world where you have recipes and machine states you may want to upload before you go offline to do work. So now we go to communications, go offline, and voila we're offline. The first thing we want to do offline is tidy up our Boolean AND. So I'm going to click on the properties button and I'm going to uncheck inputs 3 and 4. Notice that there are 8 inputs so uh, just for grins we'll turn them all on and go 
We'll even turn on enable out and enable in. We'll turn them all on. Then go look. See how big that instruction got? Or this function? Oh, we don't need all that. So we'll go back and we'll turn. these off whoops I missed one and now we have a two input boolean and which is what we wanted we want another boolean and and we want to put it over in this area so we'll grab this guy and lift him up here to give us some space I don't like the way that line goes straight up from the connector it does not want to cooperate we'll put it up there anyway and then we're going to click on this control C control V control C control V close that error window bring this over to here and then we want to connect the and the output of the first boolean and with one of the inputs on the second boolean and notice how this tidied up this line for us and we want to add an output reference and we want it to be the TT LED so I put in TT pops up LED hit enter and we connect the output from here to here next we want to add a TON or an on delay timer so we'll grab one up here from timers TONR we drag it down and we'll put it right there however we don't need all of this and there's some things we do need we want to keep the timer enable and the preset but we don't need the reset so we'll turn off the accumulate we'll turn off the reset and we'll turn on the timer timing bit see how we change the looks of it of course you did this in your lab you're not seeing this for the first time we're just going through what you did in your lab we were left with the timer enable pre preset timer timing and done bit then we added another input reference for the preset there's no reason to have a big space in there and we want 1000 remember all the timers in the logix engine are in milliseconds thousands of a second so one thousand thousandths of a second is one second so we've given this timer instruction a preset of one thousand now we need a couple uh, more instructions we need a boolean or so go back up to the top here go to favorites there's a boolean or right there and we want that boolean or something like right there we're going to go in and turn off the visibility on two of the inputs. Then we're going to connect the done bit from the timer instruction over to input one. We also need another Boolean AND. So I'm going to make this smaller. Drag down a Boolean AND. and connect across there go to properties and turn off to the inputs remember they'll work without turning them off in other words with with leaving the visibility there but if you don't connect them it makes them a one so you might as well just uncheck the visibility it just makes the whole thing look cleaner then we need another output reference and this one is going to be latched LED and of course latched delay comes up and alphanumerically in the tag database once we get close we just click on this drop down and right there's our tag that we want we need a reset push button so we grab another input reference and we type in RE and there's our reset button tag hit enter and we need a 
Boolean not. I'm sure we'll find one up here under favorites. There it is right there. Drag it down. We can put it fairly close to this instruction. And bring this down to here. Connect it up. Now remember that our reset button, when, when you push the reset button, you want to reset something. In this case, we want the reset button when not pressed to have a state of one. So we use a not. So if you have zero here, you'll have one here. If you have one here, you'll have zero here. We come out of here and we go up to there. Whoops. I need to reposition some of this. So I'm going to bring it down to there because I want to connect up the timer timing bit to input two on this Boolean AND. This gives us one more connection to make and that is our feedback from the output of this Boolean AND back to the input of this Boolean AND. Now we're going to verify this project and we're going to see something important. So we click Notice we instantly get two errors and two warnings. We don't care about the warnings. Those are duplicate destructive bit reference detected. That means that we're using the same tag on output type instructions in two different routines. But since we control the routines individually with those enable bits, it, it isn't going to matter. But the two errors, we'll scroll up here, right there. Unresolved loop, or it says, re an unresolved loop, resolve the loop by changing the data assumption. It's this connection right here. Now I'm going to move this one to make it look a little nicer. And I don't like the way this one, so I'm going to have to delete this element and re-add it. So I'll move this over here. So it can't jog all the way over there. I got a feeling it's still there. See, it's, these things aren't that cooperative. So I'll move it back to here. Delete it again. The only reason I'm leaving this in the video is so you can see what a struggle it is. I think I know what the problem is. We'll move this one over. We'll move this one over. Now we'll connect up this one and see what happens. Much better. I can live with that. So now we have everything connected. We still have the unresolved loop though, and that's this connection right here. What that means is when the controller goes to the run mode and it looks at the logic, it doesn't know whether to run this block first or this block. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume data available on this line. Now you could pick another line, but for our case, we're going to assume data available. You see the little double arrow? on the end of this line going to input two, that loop is now resolved. So when we verify it, see, zero errors. We still have the two warnings, but we don't care about the warnings. This logic now is in good shape. Okay, now save your project. Once it's saved, let's download. Who active? Download. Your standard message, download. Done downloading, change controller mode back to remote run. Yes. Close our, our uh, status box down there, and now we're online with the logic. And if you look up here, you can see the, dis or the display. I don't know why I want to keep saying disable. Display enable switch is turned on, so when we push the start button, we get an output. However, nothing else is happening. Now, okay, if you were troubleshooting, I'm still holding the button down. So you see the disable, enable, switch, start, push button there, one. But the output, in the output of the first Boolean and band zero, one is one. So that means the start LED is on right now. If I look over at the demo, I see the LED lit. That also goes to band number two, Boolean and number two, and input one. But look, the output of the TONR, the timer, the timer timing bit, is zero. Therefore, 
when you add one and zero together you get zero the output for the timer timing LED is zero I just let go of the start push button so what you don't see is the timer timing bit going high so I just start push button zero now it's one you don't see the timer timing bit going high which means the timer is not timing so what did we forget to do or you can say what did I forget to do on purpose let's go look at the ladder logic a minute look in here you're more familiar with ladder logic probably than function block diagrams what do we have going on in here that we don't have over here well your clue is that you have a value of zero when you should have a value of one for the first second while the timer is timing notice we have one input that's not connected our timer enable and if you look back at the ladder diagram that would be right here coming out of start push button we're executing the on delay timer as soon as we push the push button function block diagram we don't have anything going from here down to here so let's move this well we'll go to the online edit mode first right here start pinning routine edits and we'll move this back to here then we'll bring a line down from here to here now, I don't like the way this jogs around but I think the only way that I could fix it would be to make this smaller and then I would have to take and grab this much drag it over a little bit there we go that looks better so now when we push the start button it's going to two devices if we, if we look at the ladder logic diagram it's going to this circuit and this one now let's save we're not going to upload the tags and we're going to finalize all edits now let's try that again only this time watch the timer timing bit right here see that goes high the timer timing LED is on our notice our done bit is on and our latched LED is on so I'm gonna let go of start push button so notice that this is now zero but look this is still one that's because we're taking one and we're feeding it back and this is an or so timer done or feedback from the output of this boolean and so we're in a loop now so this will stay on until we hit the reset because remember this is an and so it's this one and this one remember the boolean not inverts the state of the reset push button which is zero see one and one equals one so watch this one this one and this one when I push the reset button reset button goes to one that's inverted now you have zero out to input two of B and D three band three the loop is broken and it stays off so this logic works identical to this logic and that's why we did it this way because this logic you probably understand much better than you do this logic depends on what industry you come from but if you're just starting this is much easier to follow than this is I still don't like the way this looks I don't like this line coming off of here so I'm going to try to move things it won't let me do it while it's running so I'm going to go to the edit and I'm going to move this over a little bit more move this over move this over it tidied itself up there I don't know about that uh, double loop but we'll move this over move this over oh it's back to vertical I really really dislike that so I'm going to 
delete this element. and reconnect it and see what it looks like. That's better. Okay, I really didn't change anything in the way this executes. And keep in mind, this is all a figment of our imagination. What you see here is an interpretation of the logic of the machine level language that we created to download to the programmable app automation controller. If I save this and open it back up, there's no guarantee that lines will take on this exact same shape. Sometimes tidying up these things doesn't avail a whole lot. So we'll finalize all edits. And we'll test start our program again. Start push button, timer's timing. At the end of one second it's done. And the logic works identical to LLD01. What this does is gives you a comparison. Obviously, this is much easier to write and troubleshoot than this. All that means is that ladder logic diagrams are much clearer for discrete sequence and logic than function block diagrams are. Ordinarily, I would never use function block diagrams for discrete logic. I would use it for analog, for math, for process, for PIDs, but I would never use it for this type of an application. The main reason for doing this, and we're going to do this with all the languages, is first we do something in ladder logic diagram that everybody understands. And by the way, I can go back to the main routine here, uncheck or toggle enable FBDs, toggle enable LEDs and then go to LLD01, hit the start push button, there's your logic running. Now I see that the preset is zero, so let's make that 1000. And do that again. Timer timing, hits 1000, latched LED on, reset button, and latches it. Go back to main routine toggle the enable LLD off, toggle this on, go to function block diagrams, push the start push button, now you see the timer timing bit was on for one second and then the done bit is on and I'm looking at my LEDs on my hardware device and they behave exactly the same, identical, 100% with the ladder logic diagram. One last thing to demonstrate before we're finished with this lab project. I realized in watching this that the ladder logic diagram, you can see the preset and the accumulate on the timer, whereas here you cannot. So let's fix that. Let's go back to properties and let's turn on the accumulate. We know what the preset is because we're feeding it in as an immediate. We'll hit apply. Now you see this is a little bit bigger, so now we'll see a number here. The only problem is, is if that number gets real large, it's going to overlap our line. So just for grins, let's move this a little further out. I don't think it's going to cooperate with us. Delete that element. Put it in again. Well, we've got a little more space, but now look. We're overlapping this line. See, and that could get confusing. Drag this one up a little bit. Drag this one up. And that's tolerable. So let's save that. And download. Download. Now let's watch the cumulate. You see what happened? Even though we had this line stretched out, it's now moved back right in front of our cumulate. We'll try it anyway. Yeah, you can see it accumulating just like you would in the ladder diagram. 
Okay, that finishes up the first go at function block diagrams. This is a lab in volume two of RS5000. And in volume three, we will have a function block diagram lab that involves analog, maybe even some temperature control. Let's look at two of the routines that we used in the lab. The first one is the function block diagram. We're going to go through and state these function blocks in more conventional terms. So we're going to start with if start PV and this display enable switch, meaning if start TB is true or one and display enable switch is one, then start LED. This language is more typical of script programming, like basic C structured text. But looking at the logic, if the display enable switch is on and the start push button is on, then Boolean AND is true, the output is one, and that turns on the start LED. So if start PB and display enable switch, then start LED. Also, if start push button or start PB, then enable timer. If the start push button, start PB is high, not only does it turn on the input two of the Boolean and number one, it also enables the timer so the timer starts accumulating. If start PB, then enable timer. And if timer timing, and we know the timer times for the length of the preset until the done bit comes on, and if timer timing, or you could just say and timer timing, you don't need the if. If you wanted the invert, you would say and not timer timing. So and timer timing, then TT LED. So our second Boolean and looks at the timer timing bit of the timer and the output of the first Boolean AND, and if those are both high or true, then the second Boolean AND is true, and it turns on the TT LED, or the timer timing LED. That LED will stay lit as long as the timer is timing. When the accumulate reaches the preset, the timer stops timing, timing the TT bit goes off, and the DN, or the done bit, goes on. If timer done or latched LED. So the first Boolean OR, 0, 1, it has two inputs. And we call the second input latched LED because if latched LED is on, then we're feeding a 1 back to input 2. So the first Boolean OR reads timer done or latched LED. The second, the output from the first Boolean OR and not reset button. And we say not reset button because right now the reset button is low. In other words, it's not being pushed. And because it's not being pressed right now, you have a zero at reset button. But we needed a one to keep Boolean AND number three with an output of one when the button's not pushed. So we used a Boolean not to invert it. So technically, a one out of Boolean not number one is a not reset push button. Boolean or number one, input one is true if timer done. Input two is true if latched LED, feedback from the output of these Boolean in number three. Then latched LED. This is fairly simple logic. It's entirely Boolean other than the timer, but all the logic itself is entirely Boolean, which means it's, it's strictly logical execution of the state of bits. This is the ladder logic diagram that we used, that we created first, and then we created the function block diagram to match. Actually, they're not a perfect match. They are not totally equivalent, and Originally, when I wrote the lab, I was intending for them to both be equivalent, equivalent logically. 
Then, of course, when you write programs, when you get that far in your career and start writing programs, you're going to realize that you write a program, it looks logical, it looks like it should do the functions that you need, but then when you go to start it up and commission it, you're going to find little things that didn't work out quite the way you thought. So I decided to leave the two mismatched, not equivalent, they're very close, just one minor difference, and we will get to that. Using our previous descriptions, if start PB and disable and display enable switch, and if timer timing, then start LED, etc. Using that, looking at the logic, and using the same phrases, the same terms that we use with a function block diagram, if start PB and display enable switch, then start LED. Now this form of relay ladder logic or ladder logic diagrams still follows the electrical format where the vertical line on the left is one polarity and the vertical line on the right is another polarity and current flow conducts from one vertical line to the other whether it's DC, AC, it still conducts to the right of each horizontal line you have a load so you have a LED start LED then you have a timer timing LED then you have a timer device and in the electrical wor world that would be a hardwired timer and the hardware timer is like a relay but it has a time delay the relay contact from that timer would be latch delay dot done and then you have another load latched LED and in the bottom electrical circuit you have a push button normally open push button and then you have the other coil of a dual coil latched relay the latch and unlatch instructions each have a true execution and no false execution when you energize the coil with the L in it that pulls contacts closed and they mechanically latch. When you energize the coil with the U in it for unlatch, that coil magnetically pulls the dog away from, and a dog is a type of mechanical catch, it pulls the catch away from the contacts and releases the contacts. And of course you can't have both coils on at the same time, that would defeat the purpose. So this Lantern logic diagram does follow suit with electrical flow, but remember, I told you many, many, many lectures ago, forget relays, forget electrical. But the reason this particular diagram is so easy to read is because it does follow, follow the electrical format. In a little while, you'll see one that doesn't. Again, if start PB and display enable switch, then start LED. If start PB and timer timing, then timer timing LED. If start PB, then enable the timer. If timer done or latched LED, then latched LED. Now this phraseology that we pulled from the function block diagram is not the way you would probably state this, but it boils down to the same thing. That the latched LED is going to be on if the timer is done or if it's already latched, it's going to be on. And not if the reset button is pushed. The normally open looking symbol, which we call a true if on, since the push button is not pushed, it's off. So it's not reset button. A normally open push button, when you don't have your finger on it, is open. It's not pushed. So reset PB is not pushed. So not, our, not reset PB. Therefore, we can use the unlatch instruction as the a representation of not reset PB. Not a very clean description trying to transfer directly from function block diagrams to ladder logic diagrams. Here's where these two pieces of logic are not perfect. If I were to go back to the function block diagram, you would see that the timer timing light was not lit unless the display enable switch 
was true. Whereas in this logic, when you push the start push button, if the display enable switch is turned on, then you're going to get the start LED right away. As long as the timer is timing, the TT LED is going to be on, which means the start and the TT LED go on immediately. When the timer times out, the TT LED goes off because it's no longer timing, and then the done bit turns on the latched LED. You see the timer timing LED whether the display enable switch is energized or not. With a function block diagram, it didn't work that way. So we're going to show you a few more variations of this logic. Let's jump back and forth between these two. This is the function block diagram. And if you, I'm going to move my cursor into the view here. Remember I said that the TT LED was not illuminated unless you had the disable switch and the start push button. So if you have the display enable switch and the start push button, then you enable the start and you satisfy one half of this Boolean and the other half of which is satisfied by the timer timing. So if you have both of these and timer timing, then you're going to have the timer timing LED. In this logic, if you have the start push button, you're going to see the timer timing bit whether you ever have the display enable switch or not. So these are not equivalent. And I will show you how to make them equivalent. I'm also going to show you some other variations. Here we are back with our project again. You recognize our function block diagram here. We were just looking at it in a PowerPoint slide. And remember that the start LED only is displayed if both inputs are met or at one for this Boolean AND. If you have both the display enable switch and the start push button, then you get a start LED. As the timer is timing, because when you push the start push button or you have start PB go high, then the timer is enabled. It starts to accumulate and the timer timing bit goes high to input to a Boolean AND number two. So if you have both of these switches and the timer timing, then you get the timer timing LED. Whereas in the ladder logic diagram, you did not. In other words, if the display enable switch, as a matter of fact, we'll just turn that off. Okay. Now I'm going to push the start push button. And I want you to watch these two LEDs down here and then this third one. So the start LED is going to go on first. As a matter of fact, we'll bump up the timer to two seconds. We'll put 2000 in there so we have two seconds so that gives us more time. So I'm going to start the push button. I'm going to push start PB. It goes true and notice that the, I'll reset it so you can see that again. Without the display enable switch turned on, start LED, you never see it. But you do see the TT LED. See, while the timer is timing for two seconds, the timer timing LED is on. I just realized something. This is, you know, I could edit this out of this, but I'm going to show you what happened. You see down here, I have all these routines. I have a main routine, ladder logic diagram one, function block diagram one, ladder logic diagram two, function block diagram two, ladder logic diagram three. I created all these to make a point. Let's look at the main routine. Notice what I have enabled. I was just showing you ladder logic diagram one. It's not enabled. Number three was. So the timer timing bit did not come on because we were not executing that routine. I didn't intend for this to be in this lesson. But I think I'm going to leave it in here because this is typical of what happens when you're troubleshooting code where you execute different portions of it under different conditions. So we purposefully put in these five conditions here so we can enable whichever one we want it. So we toggle this on we, when we want to do ladder logic diagram one. So let's toggle that one on. That's the one that should have been on. Then we click on ladder logic diagram one. We're back to this. Now watch the timer timing LED as the timer is timing. 
start PB, timer timing. The TT LED is on while the timer is timing. When the timer is done, the latched LED goes on. Now I'm going to let go of start PB. When I do, that resets the timer back to zero. The done bit is no longer on, but latched LED stays on until you hit the reset button down on the bottom rung, which I did right now. So that turned off latched LED. To get all the LEDs to show up, I have to turn on input one, display enable switch. Now watch the three LEDs, start, TT, and latched. You get start right away and TT, but then when the timer's done timing, you still have start because it's the rung's still true. And then you have the latched LED. When I let go of the button, the start goes off and you're left with just the latch. So remember that. If the latch display, if the display enable switch is not on, then you don't see the start LED, but you do see the timer timing LED in the ladder logic. Let's go to function block diagram one, but first we go back to the main routine. Right click, toggle bit, and we want function block diagram one. So we'll enable function block diagram one. Click on the tab. Now you can see that the display enable switch is on, right? The start push button is not. So let's turn off the display enable. Also notice that the latched LED is on and that one is being fed back to input two. So we have a loop here. One, one, fed back, see? We have a loop here. So this is on right now. This LED is on right now. Now I'm going to push this reset button right here. When I do, you see that goes one, and when it does, then this goes zero, the output, and so the input to this and here is zero. Now I just let go of the button so it went back to one. But while this was zero, that disqualified the Boolean and put out a zero here, the last LED went off, and what was fed back here was a zero. So zero or zero is zero and zero and one is zero for an AND circuit. But notice that you do not get the start LED or the timer timing LED unless you have both the display enable switch and the start PB. Back here, you got the start LED if you had on the display enable, but you got the timer timing LED anytime that the timer is timing because this was not a permissive in front of or in series with a timer timing bit. Look at that one more time. Let's take this logic right here. In this logic you see the timer timing bit whether the display enable switch is turned on or not. So this is ladder diagram, ladder logic diagram 1. Let's go to ladder logic diagram 2. Notice that the timer timing bit now is not connected over here it is in series with the display enable switch. So we'll go to the main routine. We will disable or, yeah, we'll disable or disenable, however you would like to say, disable function block diagram one. We'll go to ladder logic diagram two, right click, toggle, and LLD number two. So this is enabled now. So now if we push the start push button, Watch the start LED and the timer timing LED. Okay, the timer's timing, and when it times out, the last LED goes on. But notice that the start LED and the timer timing LED never went on because they are both dependent on the display enable switch. That is how the function block diagram here, this, that's how that logic worked. You need both the display enable and the start PB in order to get the start LED or the TT LED showing up during sequence. So let's go back to this logic. So this logic right here is equivalent to this function block diagram. Okay, this ladder logic diagram was equivalent to this function block diagram. You have, to both, you have to have both display enable switch and start PB in order to get the start LED or timer timing LED energized. Okay, 
and that's what you have here. If the display enable switch is not on, if this isn't true, then you none of this logic executes. Okay, how do we alter the function block diagram so the timer timing LED comes on as soon as the timer timing bit is running? Real simple. We remove that logic that was right here and we have the timer timing bit directly driving the timer timing LED. So the only LED that you don't see without the display enable switch is the start LED. But as soon as the timer t starts timing, that LED comes on. When the timer's done and you're not pushing the reset button, then the last LED comes on. Let's look at one more variation of this logic. When I first saw this format, because remember earlier I said that the this ladder logic diagram here followed the electrical circuit format of uh, switch closures and loads. Everything over here is a load and everything on this side is a switch closure. This is also ladder logic diagram. You can't do this type of code ladder logic diagram in the Slick 500 products or any of the MicroLogics. This is strictly the Logics engine, which is Control Logics, Compact Logics, Flex Logics, Drive Logics, and Soft Logics. The Logics engine runs in the newer products. It allows you to write your code like this. So it doesn't follow electrical format because you wouldn't be able to ever have this come on unless this contact was closed. But that's not the way the logic works. If this is true, then this. And if this is true, then that. And if this is true, then that. Well, I'm going to push the start push button now. And we'll bump this up to, no, two seconds is long enough. And by the way, I did go to the main routine and I enabled ladder logic, ladder logic diagram three. So I'll go back to ladder logic diagram three. I'm going to push the start push button. You see the timer's timing, but you didn't see the timer timing or the start LED because the display enable switch wasn't on. Okay, I'm going to let go of the button, and now I can reset it with the same button I did before. Reset push button, only now I'm using true if off. And instead of using a latch, I'm using a seal in. So I wanted to deviate in a couple ways. One is I wanted to get away from using the latch unlatch. So what I do is when the timer's done, if you're not pushing the reset button, I turn on this bit. For the rest of the scan, it sees that it is on. So this bit in memory is on. So this instruction bypasses that one. You're not pushing the reset button. So this stays, if you want, sealed in. You might say latch, but it's not. It's equivalent of a latch, unless you lose power. Now, if I push the reset button, then, of course, this is false, and the rung is false. So I push the reset button. You didn't see that. I'll push it a little harder, so you see it, the green go away. Now it's coming back. Unless I turn on the display enable switch, which I will right now. Local slot 2 input data 1. Now it's on. Now watch the start and TT LED. Push the start button. You get the start, timer timing, timer timing LED right away. Timer times out and you get the latched LED. This really had nothing to do with function block diagrams. However, we do have two function block diagrams here. One with this Boolean AND that does not give us the TT LED or the start LED unless we have both switches. That is equivalent to this logic. Without the display enable, you don't see the start LED or the timer timing LED. Even though that bit goes true, because this isn't true, neither one of these outputs are going to be energized. So this logic right here, and I did alter it to get rid of the latch because you could technically say that this is not really a latch. It's sealed in. you got a feedback loop. As long as this is one, it feeds the one back to here, and as long as the timer is done, you've got 
your latch and, and because this is an OR so even when the timer is no longer done this is an OR so input 1 or input 2 gives you a 1 here and a, not pushing the reset button and a 1 from here gives you a 1 here that 1 comes back to here so even when this 1 disappears from the done bit this 1 all by itself keeps that latched so you can see it's sealed in to break it we have to break the loop see this is a closed loop here we have to break that loop and we break it right here in this boolean and by making see this is one right now if you push the button it's going to go to the reset pb goes to one and the output of the b not if it were executing would be zero now you see it's one right we're not executing this logic that's what's so tricky about looking at logic and not realizing you're not executing it you will see the state change on bits but the logic is not executing so one here did not give you zero here if I go back to the main routine and disable this one and enable function block diagram one then go back to function block diagram one now watch the zero and the one when I hit the reset button you see a one at reset PB gives you a zero coming out of the B not okay I think that's enough right now for function block diagrams remember we did this as a comparison with ladder logic diagram and technically this function block diagram is equivalent to this ladder logic this one is also equivalent to this one so we did it in two different ways these two basically are equivalent ladder logic this one is equivalent to that one. Executes with exact same results. Function block diagrams. Now that was a mouthful. And again, I apologize for an hour and 20 minutes. Just be glad you're not in one of my live classes. Um, the first day of my live classes in the, each day's seven and a half hours basically. I typically lectured most of the whole first day. Now, I didn't tell anybody that in advance because I didn't want everybody to leave. However, uh, I have been blessed with uh, a teaching skill and I can usually keep people entertained uh, for that length of time, but it wears me out. I mean, if you get tired of listening, you're probably not as tired as I am of talking. Sorry about the length of this. We'll see you on the next one.